Hi guys, Rob from Royal Balls and today we're going to look at a new pickup. So this is introducing this uh, pastel pinstripe or lemon blessed female. Uh, but you can see this is not an ordinary lemon blessed. Uh, you can also see that I'm not doing the video from the snake room. This is a new pickup. The snake is in quarantine so it's been nowhere near uh, my uh, collection. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment after I've introduced the snake, but um, let's just take a look at this girl. Uh, you can see the extraordinary amount of paradoxing that she has down the side. I'll give a little look at the, the belly there. She has paradoxing on her neck and also, I don't know whether the camera's picking up, but you can see also, the paradoxing is not just the white stripe, but you can see here uh, there are some orange stripes as well, some orange paradoxing that go down the body, which are a slightly different color. And if you have a look at the pattern on the back, you'll see that the pinstripe pattern is also broken up. There are patches of normal pinstripe where you can see the railway tracks down the back, but it's very broken up where the animal has the paradoxing and also broken up down the, the sides and you can see that uh, the pattern is very scribbly and broken up. If we look at the head there, she is starting to relax now. This thing's a little pistol, it's already bitten me once. Uh, so the history behind this snake is um, quite interesting. Uh, it is from ARP Constrictors. I got it from uh, Awin and the pairing was a lemon blast female to what he calls an orange granite male and the orange granites were supplied from uh, Justin Kabelka a number of years ago um, a sort of dinka project and um, the snakes look relatively normal um, but they do have a slightly wacky pattern and as a dinka project it was it was called the orange granite and how bred these snakes for a number of years and, and nothing ever came of them until this pairing um, with the lemon blast and this snake popped out which is rather unusual and I've been fortunate enough to, uh, to, to pick up this snake. So the understanding there is that if anything wacky does come out of any breedings um, that I have with this snake that uh, Owen gets to, uh, to get first pick of the babies um, obviously if there is something genetic in here um, he wants it back into his collection, so um, I've obviously agreed to that. That's no big deal if I do uh, breed this girl. She's starting to relax and get curious. Look at that. Look at that head and the eye strut, the glorious colour on the head, a really light, caramelly type colour. And now you can start to see the orange banding also down the sides with the scribbly pattern there. So certainly something unusual going on with this girl, whether it's just the paradoxing or whether there is something genetic there. You can see the, the orange coloration now in bands on her back where the, the railway tracks from the pinstripe pattern come back to something relatively normal and then you get the white banding where it's broken up and then all scribbly again. And then down at the, the tail end, that's relatively, relatively normal. So we're not sure what's going on with, the, with, with this snake, but um, it was something that I, I couldn't resist when I, when I saw it. It's such a pretty snake. And pinstripe is um, such a fantastic gene. I shot a video of um, uh, a clutch recently where Owen had paired a um, camo sable, which is a pinstripe super sable, with a GHI Mojave. And obviously everything came out really, really dark. Um, but the clutch was much, much better, uh, much nicer looking snakes than I ever imagined. So um, I could go several ways with this girl when she, when she grows up. I do have a GHI Mojave male that I could put to her and we could try and go uh, the dark side. I've also got a, a banana male that I could go uh, if we wanted to try and do something on the light side. 
And I could also try putting it into uh, Pied or Clown. So Pinstripe is such a fantastic gene. It goes well with, with so many different things. There's such a lot of things that I can, I can do with this girl. Look at the awesome color now. You can see the color banding down the, down the back. Really is a very pretty snake. So that's the story here. <clears throat> now, um, she is in quarantine, and for those people that um, um, want to know what sort of thing to look out for when you're purchasing a snake, any snake, not just this specific snake, first and foremost, and I can't stress how important this is, um, get the snake from somebody that you know. Obviously, a lot of my collection comes from ARP constrictors, and I have um, uh, no, no concerns that uh, this animal is anything but healthy and if I do have a problem I know that I can always go back to Owen. I've seen the parents, he's explained the pairing to me, he's explained the history uh, behind that um, Dinka project which is, is quite exciting. It's always exciting when you're never quite sure. So no qualms at all about getting the snake from him. It is healthy. We've obviously had a good look at the snake. Um, it's behaving relatively normally although it is stressed out as I said it's a little bit of a pistol so it, it, it is a little bit nervous but you can see there's no kinks um, there's no peculiar body swellings uh, the belly is clean her eyes are bright she's tongue flicking she's behaving normally which obviously is a is a very good sign uh, when you when you're looking at a snake now when I brought her home it's only a 20 minute ride and she came in this plastic tub let me just um, let me just put her down. Now she's cocked and she's going to have a pop at me in a minute. But you can see that the paper in, inside the plastic tub is white, uh, which means that if there is any mites at all on the snake in the journey home in the car, um, it would show up uh, pretty much on the, the white uh, tissue there. You would see the little black flecks. So um, always keep your animals on white paper. When she came home, the first thing I did was to give her a bath in just plain water. This is just plain water. It comes straight from the tap. We're in the tropics here, so the water is at uh, 28, 30 degrees. You can drop the snake straight into that. Bob the snake in there for about 20 minutes to rehydrate. And then put the tub down onto a white background underneath there. So you can have a look on, in the tub there. And if there are any mites that have come off in the water... Uh, that didn't show up while I was transporting the snake home. They will show up in the water there. This is just plain water. If you suspect that your snake does have mites, um, you can add a little drop of washing up liquid. Just ordinary household washing up liquid, but just one drop into the water and soak your snake in that. And what that does, the washing up liquid, breaks the, uh, the surface tension of the water and allows capillary pressure to draw the water in and underneath the scales of the snake where the mites are. So it drowns the snakes much more effectively than just pure water. So just a little tip there, it won't do your snake any harm, just one drop of washing up liquid in there and it does help to get the, uh, the water into where the mites might be burrowed under the skin. Something else that you might need to watch out for um, is um, when, you, when you quarantine an animal, you'll be looking to see that it's uh, pooing normally. I won't try and feed this girl for uh, a few days. She is nine months old and only weighs 300 grams. I've, I've weighed her. So she is underweight. She's not unhealthy. This is fairly typical for Owen snakes. I find that um, um, he's very honest about it. He maintenance feeds all his babies, so they do grow slowly. When you get them home and you start to feed them, they explode. She will double in weight in the next couple of months and I have no doubt that she's gonna be an awesome eater. Uh, you can see she is very, very active. And I would much rather have a snake that's defensive and snaps at you than one that's lethargic and not, uh, not, not active. I can, I can deal with that. So the tub that she's gonna go into, let me just um, show you the tub. A very simple setup here. Uh, we're in the tropics, so I don't need to add any heat to the tub. Um, she will go into a separate room. 
The tub is clear, which I'm, I'm not a big fan of for ball pythons. It's a, a, a clear, just slightly larger than shoebox size. And in that tub, plain white paper on the bottom. Again, that will help you see any mites and it will also help you to tell whether her poos and peas are, are normal because it shows up nicely against the white background. Nothing else in there. She'll get a hide. I don't know whether she needs one, but that might just help her to settle in. So there's a small hide in there and there's a bowl of water. And what we'll be doing over the next couple of weeks is to, um, is to observe her, make sure she feeds, um, make sure that she's pooing and peeing normally, but looking for any signs of abnormal behaviour like soaking in the water bowl constantly, stuff like that, stuff that, that is unusual for these, these snakes. So she will go into this clear tub here and she'll go into a dark room. I've got a storage room at the back there which is a, a constant 28 degrees which is perfect for these animals. She'll go in there and it will be nice and dark for her, so it'll, it'll help her to settle in. Um, even though she is from a trusted breeder, and I'm sure that she is 100% healthy, and that there are no issues with this snake, it makes no sense to risk putting that into the rest of my collection. Um, I maybe cut the quarantine period down a little bit from what I would normally do if she's perfectly healthy. Um, but um, that's where she's going to stay, and I'll, I'll see if I can feed her in the, in the next couple of days. So that's the, uh, that's the tub that she's in, very simple setup. And in fact, she'll go into a, a sliding tub in a rack system, very, very similar in size to this. It'll be a darker tub, maybe slightly larger. Um, and she'll go into my snake room, and she will live on uh, paper. I, I don't put substrate here, again, in the tropics, um, no problems with humidity. Um, so I keep all my animals on paper. Cleaning day is very, very simple. I whip out the tub, uh, take, the, take out the paper, disinfect the tub, put new paper in, put the snake back in, and there you go. So every clean for me out here is a deep clean. I don't do any spot cleaning. Um, they get cleaned when they need cleaning, when the paper's dirty. And it's a very, very simple job just to, uh, to keep everything nice and clean. <clears throat> Something else to watch out for with new snakes is uh, internal parasites, worms. And you can, uh, you can see that when the animal defecates. Uh, you, you can see if the, uh, if the poo is a little bit abnormal or has worms in it. Uh, I don't think this animal will have. Um, Fabendazole is something that um, you use. Uh, it's a very mild um, anti-internal parasite medication. It's used on cats and dogs. Um, it's actually quite difficult to get because it's, it is so mild. It works on reptiles. You have to be very careful with the dosage. And not recommended to give your snakes this unless you're absolutely certain that they do have internal parasites. Now, but that's something that you can look at. But there's something far more natural that you could use. Um, and here's a little tip that I've picked up from some of the rat breeders here. Um, before you uh, feed your snakes rats, for a couple of days before they, they feed, you give your rats pumpkin. They eat pumpkin, and pumpkin has some sort of chemical in it that um, destroys internal parasites. It's a, a, a very natural way of destroying parasites in, in the rats, so they're not transferring parasites into the snake. And you can then feed your snake the, uh, the rat after it's been euthanized, if you're feeding uh, frozen. Um, but while the rat still has a gut full of this uh, pumpkin that it's been eating, and that then, as the snake digests its meal, that then also deworms your snake. Uh, and it's, it's very, very mild, um, does no harm whatsoever to the snakes. And as a routine, my feeder rats would have been given uh, pumpkin prior to the snakes eating. So they get this natural deworming preventative medication, I guess you'd call it, all the time anyway. But um, that's some, some tip that, uh, that I learned from some of the rat breeders out here in Malaysia, uh, something that you could, uh, you could try if you've never heard of that before. Uh, it's very mild and does no harm to the snake at all. So uh, she will be getting pumpkin fed rats uh, when she starts feeding. Um, Obviously, your best friend when you're quarantining an animal is F10. Everything gets disinfected. I will not touch any of my other snakes until I've washed my hands, sanitized my hands um, while I uh, look at this snake. Uh, and this is also something that you can uh, watch out for with respiratory infections. Um, during the quarantine period, I'll be watching for any abnormal signs of bubbling from the mouth or any uh, residue on the side of the tub there. Um, 
Respiratory infections are very rare here in the tropics because the, 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 the environmental conditions naturally are very, very suitable to these snakes. So it's very rare that they do have issues. But if they do and you notice it, it's best to treat it early. And um, a back trim or a back trill, uh, you can Google that, is an antibiotic that can be used on snakes in um, very low dosages. Um, it's injected under the skin rather than given orally. Uh, but again, that's, um, that's a very um, last step. If you can catch a respiratory infection early enough, you can just use a, uh, a vaporizer with F10. Just put a little bit of dilute F10 into a vaporizer and um, let the vapor go into the, the, the snake tub, which will often cure snakes. But funnily enough, although snakes do not need sunlight and UV, I have found that um, any snakes that do show even a slight sign of uh, any irritation, uh, skin defects or early signs of a respiratory infection, put them out in the sun, uh, out here in the tropics, uh, get a nice ventilated tub and let them sit outside in the sunshine. And I think the UV from the sun is uh, destroying bacteria. Um, it's, it's a natural way of destroying bacteria. So I, I let the snakes sit in the sun, um, even just routinely on cleaning days, I'll let them sit outside in the sun just as a matter of routine. Um, let them, <clears throat> excuse me, let them warm up to about 36 degrees, which is about body temperature, and then just put them in the shade and let them sit outside in the, in the natural uh, atmosphere uh, all day if you want to in their tubs and then just put them back into the, the tubs. It, it doesn't do any harm and as a precautionary routine measure, um, also a good thing to do with your snakes. The other thing for mites, which people may not have seen, um, this is uh, frontline spray. It's used for cats and dogs. It's used, used for fleas. So um, the first thing a cat or a dog will do when you spray this onto a, onto a cat for fleas is, is to lick it. So it's non-toxic. Um, it is a little bit strong for reptiles. All reptiles have a much slower metabolism than um, uh, mammals. So mammals can tolerate uh, higher doses of any sort of medication uh, and they can uh, synthesize and metabolize any um, stuff that you, you put on them. So use with caution, but this frontline stuff here is extremely effective on snake mites. You can spray it onto the snake very, very um, sparsely. You don't need a lot, or you can use it on the, uh, the cage of the animal. And it leaves a, a shiny residue on the snake, and this will kill mites in a one -er. It kills them completely stone dead in one shot. So that's something which, uh, which I use if I have uh, uh, any sort of problem with, with any of the animals that, uh, that might have mites. I don't have mites in, in my collection. I'm very fastidious about keeping them clean, but it is something that you, you can use. Out here in the tropics, there's all sorts of creepy crawlies and beasties other than mites that, uh, that come in, fruit flies, all sorts of things. And again, um, just a quick spray, just at the enclosure, even without the snake inside it, as a routine measure once in a while when you're cleaning out the tubs, you can use this stuff. Uh, and it's useful as a, uh, a preventative. Um, better to be proactive than retroactive. Make sure your snakes never do get mites or any other infestations, rather than allow them to um, uh, to get mites and then have to treat it afterwards. So as a precaution, again, you can use this on the, on the bedding. Uh, as I say, use it sparingly, but it, it is extremely effective. And if you've not heard of, of using frontline flea spray for cats on your uh, snakes, it works. It's uh, extremely effective. Okay, guys, so that's it from me. Hope you enjoyed my new pickup, my uh, lemon blast. Um, so we'll be... Um, We'll be breeding this girl when she uh, gets up to size and we'll see whether anything exciting comes out of her. Um, if you do have any comments, drop a comments down below whether you prefer to, to go um, lighter with your snakes or whether I should uh, go the dark side and uh, try and breed this girl to, uh, to a, a dark male uh, and go that route with her. Plenty of time yet. She's going to be a, a year at least before she's up to size. So thanks a lot guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.